Hey everybody, welcome to The Secret History Living Inside Your Dirty Aquarium. Uh, this is Alexander Williamson speaking to you, and I just wanted to show you something that's going on in this aquarium that I'm working on remedying, uh, making a remedy for, fixing, fixing. I'm working on fixing it. Uh, so what happened is uh, there were a lot of fish in here. And, I mean, there's still a lot of fish in here, okay? But there were, like, double or triple the amount. Look how big these endlers are. These female endlers are bonkers big. These pregnant females are huge. But, in any case, uh, the there were more plecos in here and more endlers. Now, I was doing a lot of water changes on this tank. And what happened is I have gravel substrate, and uh, it crashed. So... Even though the gravel does have a lot of uh, uh, surface area for biological uh, bacteria, which takes the fish poop, which contains ammonia, and the leftover food, even though there never is any leftover food in this tank, um, it can turn that into uh, the ammonia into nitrites and then into nitrates. So... Uh, in this tank, what happened is it was uh, dealing with that at a relatively high level. When that went away, uh, when I got rid of a lot of the waste, and plecos, okay, it's gross, but it's actually going to the bathroom right now. This adult pleco, when you have a colony of them, they make a lot of waste. A lot of these long, stringy uh, waste lines, basically. And... Corydoras can too, guppies also can, endlers, um, adanios, I suppose, can. But in the, in, in the process of doing, making all this waste and uh, this tank being overcrowded, it's not ideal. I need to get uh, fish out of this tank, honestly. In the process of all that, uh, it caused the ammonia to go down so low that there was no food. So the plants uh, have been uprooted by the catfish. They do this daily, uh, the Corydoras and the other catfish, the uh, Plecos or Ancestris, as well as the little crayfish. They will pull up any little thing they can too. Uh, and the other Ancestris in here, uh, they'll pull things up. So with everybody pulling things up, Basically, you end up with uh, the plants dying as well. And you can see there's this just bacteria growing on things. There's algae on the glass, but there's this bacteria, this fuzzy stuff that builds up. Um, mulm builds up also, which is fish, fish waste. You can spot it because it's a dark brown color usually. Um, it's natural. It it's fine. That's where the beneficial bacteria will build up. But this is not. You see that white fuzzy stuff? And the reason it can happen is if your tank is not cycled and bacteria takes over. Or in my case, I have a tank that was cycled, but the cycle got disrupted very, very heavily. And so the plants are not able, able to uh, eat the ammonia uh, is the usual problem. However, in my case, the plants uh, used up all the ammonia and nitrites and nitrates. My nitrates went from about 40 parts per million or 30 parts per million on the average day uh, after a water change to zero. And that is cause for the ecology of your aquarium to change and so what happened is we got this huge bloom of bacteria and a few days ago I was able to pull out and it was growing so fast it was just awful um, but uh, these turkey baster I guess syringe is what you call it uh, syringe after syringe load turkey baster after turkey baster load of this uh this debris it's also plants that are dying and just stuff that's in the gravel i mean there's some mulm too so how do i remedy this the other thing that happened was we had a heat wave and uh then we had a cold spell and the cold spell even though i have a heater uh did kind of shock things too so what happened was in general there was a giant shock to this aquarium system 
I'm really surprised I didn't lose some fish. Don't do like I do. Do as I say. Um, or do your own thing. Whatever. I'm just trying to show you what can happen. So here's a good look at that bacteria. Let's try to get it in focus. Um, that blooms. Now this can happen oftentimes when you have wood in the tank that's new wood. You'll get this clear kind of gummy fuzzy bacteria that, that appears out of nowhere. Um, and that, that's cellulose getting eaten a lot of times or tannins being broken down uh, by bacteria actively in your tank. And uh, that's that can be normal in those situations. However, a tank like this that's been up and running for three years straight you uh, or maybe two years straight you you don't want to see that so what i'm doing right now is i'm manually targeting the areas that have it built up because if i were to gravel back this whole thing i could clean a lot of the bacteria there'd still be the bacteria load in the water and luckily it's nothing harmful this time uh the fish all seem uh, happy-go-lucky and actually some of them seem to be rooting through it and eating chunks of it the catfish in particular and the shrimp and so it must be something that's totally uh, not harmful to, to the fish but um, like I said you want to get the beneficial uh, bacteria the nitrate and nitrite uh, creating bacteria back into the system as the primary bacteria because you don't want it to be so fragile that any bacteria can take over and uh, end up uh, kind of screwing up your your ecosystem in your tank and so right here you can see that's fish waste that's that's a uh, pleco waste i know it's gross but the valve i have is just not growing uh the way I need it to. So what I'm going to do here is actually increase the nutrients, increase the temperature, do lots of water changes because the bacteria is in the water column. But really what I want to do is I'll probably be doing an infusion of, I'll do a water change on this tank or, or this tank, you know, a healthy tank. And I will then take that water a day or two after it's settled in and it's got all the algae and bacteria and uh, all the good stuff that I want um, out of a tank. I don't mind any of this uh, algae that's growing in here. Um, it's a little bit of diatome algae on the glass on this tank, and then there's a whole lot of the hair algae, the fuzzy algae there. Um, and that's fine. I'm not worried about it. It doesn't hurt anything. And so I'll probably take a good five gallons out of here, transfuse it into here as quote-unquote dirty water, and that hopefully will help restore that original balance since all my tanks kind of share uh, filter media the way they were set up. They all kind of have the same strains because plants are moved around. And with that said, they all do have a unique uh, ecosystem as well uh, to some degree. But within the broad scope of millions of types of, or, you know, hundreds of thousands of types of bacteria... Uh, they share the important and crucial ones that break down uh, fish waste. And so do your aquariums. And that is one of the awesome things about aquariums. One of the great things about planted aquariums in particular uh, is that the plants also break down that ammonia. And, uh, you know, here we've got a lot of uh, decaying plant matter in the form of this is catapa leaf. This can come out now. Uh, it's great when it's decomposing like that for shrimp, like in a tank like this, or with like loaches or algae eaters, something like that. But you don't need it in a tank like this if you're having these problems. So um, the solution here uh, is going to be, I mean, maybe is to get more, probably take out some of the fish and uh and also plant more plants just for that stability for that buffer and even though oddly enough like i would expect that i would be having problems with this tank right now as all over the place as far as um i thought the ammonia and everything would be showing up with the the bacteria showing up i thought oh no overnight it just it just went rampant but the last thing I want to warn you about is if you have one of these bacteria 
uh, see that? It's just gross. Um, it doesn't smell or anything, luckily. It's, it's some innocuous, just water rot, water. I don't think it's a fungi. I think it's a bacteria. Now, if I were really worried about it, if I was seeing dead fish or anything like that, dead shrimp... Shrimp are a good barometer of health. Uh, endlers aren't because they, they're pretty hardy. They, I mean, Danios and Endlers, and Plecos for that matter, and Sisters Plecos, all uh, can withstand quite a bit of uh, abuse from their environment. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys, you know, no one's perfect. I'm far from it. I'm sure you knew that. But... Uh, also, my good bacteria that was all over this filter here, the black filter in here, this sponge filter, it's like died. It's turned brown and then black and then it died. And now that the, the fuzzy stuff is starting to appear on it. So if I had used antibiotics, um, like medication, and tried to like essentially nuke the tank to restart it, there may have been enough good bacteria in the system to make it work, but it, it 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 would have probably exacerbated the problem, and I probably would have to recycle the whole darn tank because, you know, generally one bacteria strain or one combination of several strains, I know that's kind of an oxymoron, so uh, there's... Generally, there's like a combination, an equilibrium that your tank is happy with, that your that your aquarium is uh, living with, and uh, it functions, you know, the way you want it to because of that. And right now, that equilibrium's off. If I nuke it, it has to start all over with all these fish. That's not a good idea. Now there is uh, there is biological material uh, up in this, which is off at the moment. Uh, the hang off the back filter that I have on it, which is oversized for the tank due to the overpopulation issue going on at the moment. I've been waiting for a new aquarium. I had another one go down, and so I, I kind of needed to do some shuffling, and this is the result. So I'm just trying to keep everyone healthy and not lose any fish, not see any sickness. And so far, so good. So a lot of times it's hard to tell just by looking at, you know, how dirty a tank is or whatever. That doesn't, that doesn't mean how sick a tank is by any means. Uh, you know, lakes and things are muddy and dirty. So the last thing I want to say is if I used a gravel vac, I could clean all this up. I, but... I do that in probably two or three days and do it in a third at a time because you don't want to suck up all of your good bacteria and disrupt all the good bacteria living on the mulm and the poop that's down in the rocks and then be left with even less of it trying to recolonize. And it is the dominant bacteria in a tank with uh, these kinds of creatures in it that's just, I don't know, it comes in from the air, it comes in in the tap water, it comes in on the plants. That's just the way this bacteria appears. It's kind of ubiquitous, and it's all over wherever you find life in lakes and things, and nitrifying bacteria. So, um, essentially, I'm just going to keep doing this. This is a tedious way to do it, but I like to do it because I can just focus on, you know, specific pockets of it, um, course poops right on on cue uh i can get rid of specific pockets of it clean it off certain surfaces and uh and then go from there so i just wanted to show you what happens when your biological bacteria uh your beneficial bacteria gets invaded by uh not necessarily harmful it's it's pretty innocuous but it doesn't look good and uh we we need to recalibrate this tank uh it was growing duckweed and uh and red root floaters at such a crazy rate um, because it was sucking up so much of that ammonia and nitrates and nitrites. So maybe scale back the plants for now, and then as we rebuild, I'll probably keep it more planted like this because they seem to just stay more stable. The more life forms you have, uh, they fit together, and the, the ups and downs are evened out because there's more pieces to the puzzle to kind of hold everything uh, from from sliding all over the the toolbox if that makes any sense 
All right, guys, I hope you're doing well. This is just one of those quirks that can happen. Don't freak out if it does, as long as your fish are still healthy. Um, do some water changes and, uh, you know, maybe give it an infusion of some good bacteria. You can also purchase the bacteria, but for me, I have enough of it all over in the form of filter floss. And, you know, what I could do is I could easily just take some out of here or uh, out of here for that matter and wring it out in that tank also. And then I, I will be monitoring the uh the levels of all of the the different uh, ammonia and all that kind of stuff just in case so all right guys have a good one take care and swim on